Yeah. Israel united in Christ. Represent us. Been the vagabond, perpetually hating us, cause you see the signs. It's the end of times, you gon' see the bombs. Drop down in America or Babylon, the great or the sorrowful. You gon' get destroyed cause you think you powerful. It's the pride in your heart. Alright, come on. The book of 1st Ezra, chapter 8, verse 22. I command you also that you require no tax nor any other in position of any of the priests or Levites or holy singers or the porters or ministers of the temple or of any that have doings in this temple and that no man have authority to impose anything upon them. Now I wanted to start there because this is King uh, Artaxerxes who allowed the forefather Ezra and the Israelites to be free from taxation. The reason I wanted to start there is because of the Negro, of the Negro. Now, which, where's the camera? Where's the online camera? Okay, that's the online camera, and this is the video camera here. Uh, let me start right here. <laughs> so you brothers and sisters, uh, we say shalom to you all, and we say shalom to our enemies who are watching, and we say shalom to our frenemies. Frenemies are the bro brothers, who, the black Hebrew Israelites. Yeah, yeah. Those are frenemies. The Akim, shalom Akim. Yehovah Shalom Yahweh Shai. Shalom. That's to you. So we love you. They say that it is evil to be free from taxation. But evidently in the Bible, what we read, let's get another scripture. Maybe it's an isolated verse. Give me 1 Maccabees 10, verse 29. 1 Maccabees 10, verse 29. Is it such an evil thing to be free from taxation without representation? 1 Maccabees 10, 29. The book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 10, verse 29. And now do I free you, and for your sake I release all the Jews from tributes and from the customs of salt and from crown taxes. Now, this was King Demetrius during the time of the Greeks. So here again, our people were free from taxation. Those that did the laws of the Most High God. Give me 1 Maccabees 13, verse 39. What I'm showing you is that the, the black Hebrew Israelite community, the va not all of them, but the vast majority of them don't know the scriptures who say you are evil and are part of the Illuminati if you have a 501c3 which allows you not to pay taxes if you're part of a religious organization. They don't know the Bible. Read that for me, 1 Maccabees 13, 39. 1 Maccabees chapter 13, verse 39. As for any oversight or fault committed unto this day, we forgive it. And the crown tax also, which ye owe us. And if there were any other tribute paid in Jerusalem, it shall no more be paid. So they said, let's free them from paying taxes. That's what happened during the time of Ezra, Nehemiah, and the Maccabees throughout the book. So they don't know the scriptures. So it, it really amazes me. Give me Proverbs 16, 7 now. And this is for our brothers and sisters, so that in case there's any doubt, do, well, well I'll, I'll, I'll read that in a moment, but read that, Proverbs 16, 7. The book of Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Listen good. When a man's ways please the Lord, just like Ezra's ways please the, the Lord, just like Nehemiah, just like Judah Maccabee, just like Simon Maccabee and Jonathan Maccabee. Go ahead. He maketh even his enemies. He maketh even his enemies. To be at peace with him. To be at peace with him. And that's where we're at right now. We are at that point in life right now. So just like our forefathers were free from taxation, so likewise today. So recently in the news, your president, Donald Trump, voided, listen good to what I'm about to say, voided the Johnson Amendment. He wrote an executive order voiding the Johnson, Johnson Amendment. It's a new executive order. Uh, and I do want to show the first article with Donald T. Trump. So brothers, 
sisters, never, listen to what I'm about to say, never listen to black Hebrew Israelites. Never listen to them. The vast majority of them are ignorant as hell. That's why they call themselves black Hebrew Israelites. They're not formally thinking for the return, the resurrection, or the gathering of the 12 tribes of Israel. Their mind is not so to gather the people, okay? If they're not changing their lives for the betterment of keeping God's commandments, if they're not thinking about improving the institution of marriage and family, if they're not about entrepreneurship or purchasing any type of real estate, anything that can better our people, or building learning facilities for our youth, our children, don't waste your time with these black Hebrew Israelites. They are like crabs in a barrel. They will hold you down, okay? And we're doing these things, understanding, because here goes this next, see, they don't believe that Jehovah Shai is coming back. Uh, no, we do believe he's coming back. But until he comes back, these are the things we must do. Gather the 12 tribes of Israel, invest things that for the betterment of our people, help our people who need food, clothing, water, and shelter. These are the things we must do as Israel, as the true servants of God. Give me the article. Here we go. Here we go. Trump relaxes 501c3 political activity rules. Let's read the article. So we, what we're going to find out is what is the, the, what is the amendment on the 501c3? You're going to find out as we read this, you're going to realize don't listen to black Hebrew Israelites. Remember, they, the black Hebrew Israelite community said, if you have a 501c3, you cannot say Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai. Hey, oh, security, check for the black vans out there, see if they pull up in front of the school. They're going to throw a bag over our head and pull us out. They also, what else they say you can't talk about? Wait, you can't wait. talk about gay people. Homosexuality. Homosexuality is of the devil. Check for the vans now. Check for the vans. These brothers are so evil in, in, in their speech and in, in the way they think. It's the part of what you just said about saying, how about Shem Yahweh Yeah. They said that. They said, you can't say it. And then when we do say it, they say, well, you know what? You didn't really mean it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said that wasn't heartfelt. Yeah, it wasn't heartfelt. Anything to start strife. Now, let's read the article to find out what is the clause, what, is the amend, what was the amendment based on that did not allow 501c3s to say certain things. Now we're going to enlighten our minds because black people don't like to check the news out. Here it goes. In an executive order signed earlier this week, President Trump eased restrictions on political activity by churches charities, and other 501c3 organizations. Let's pause right there. The restriction, old black Hebrew Israelite, was a political restriction that forbid you to organize funding behind a political candidate. That was the restriction. Now, do we sponsor any political... Wait, brothers, do we sponsor any political candidate? No, so... This is, this is the stupidity of the black Hebrew Israelite community. Dumb as hell. You can't, it means you can't say Yahweh. You can't talk about homos. Shut up. Let's read on. President Trump signed an executive order on Thursday that eases restrictions on political activity by churches, charities, and other 501c3 groups. Marking the National Day of Prayer, Trump's executive order attempts to neutralize the Johnson Amendment, named for Lyndon Johnson, who introduced it in the Senate in 1954. The measure prevents churches and charitable organizations from directly or indirectly participating, listen good, from participating in any political campaign on behalf of or in opposition to any candidate. So we couldn't raise money to oppose like Hillary Clinton or Trump or anything of that nature. That is what the restriction was. Uh, where am I at? Huh? Okay. While Trump's executive action does not change current law, administration officials said Trump will direct the Internal Revenue Service to exercise maximum enforcement discretion 
and not investigate religious leaders and other nonprofit groups that express political views and endorse or oppose political ten candidates during campaigns. So that is what he released. That's what he eased up on. That was the restriction, that was the restriction right there. Okay, let me read that part again. Trump, while Trump's executive action does not change current law, administration officials said Trump will direct the Internal Revenue Service, that's the IRS, to exercise maximum enforcement discretion and not investigate religious leaders and other nonprofit groups that express political views and endorse or oppose political candidates during campaigns. Okay, so now it says ASAE is in favor of keeping the Johnson Amendment intact. So this group is against him changing the Johnson Amendment. Not that we give a hoot because it's not affecting us either way. We're not into politics. We're right, we're clearing up the ignorance of the BHI, <laughs> the Black Hebrew Israelite community. Public trust is critical to the credibility and effectiveness of donor-based nonprofits, said ASAE President and CEO John Graham and all these acronyms they got, F-A-S-A-E, C-A-E, whatever. While A-S-A-E is fully supportive and will vigorously defend the First Amendment rights of nonprofit groups to advocate on public policy issues that impact their missions, the Johns Johnson Amendment exists to ensure nonpartisanship in, in organizations that receive tax-deductible contributions. Come on. Opening nonprofits up to partisan politics would undermine their purpose and ability to effectively address community needs. Last month, nearly 4,500 nonprofit organizations sent a letter to Congress calling for the preservation of the so called Johnson Amendment. The letter called on legislators to join us in oppose, opposing efforts to weaken and or repeal the current law. Because, for example, a mega church can get millions and millions of dollars. Can you imagine, that's the fear, if they put that money behind a, a particular political candidate, it would ensure they're, win, they're winning. That's what they don't want to happen. That's what the Johnson Amendment prevented. All right. Uh, the president's executive order also offers a promise to protect and vigorously promote religious liberty, but does not include controversial language from an earlier draft order that would have allowed individuals and businesses to discriminate against the LGBTQ community. What does that part mean? For example, the LGBT community, let's say they, they want to get a, a member, wants to get a job somewhere. This order here, they, they, there's a law in place that says you cannot discriminate against someone based on their sexual confusion. I like that word better. I like that word. So you can't, you can't say to a gay guy or gay girl, hey, you can't work here because of, this is a religious group, this is a Baptist organization run uh, business, we're not going to hire you. That's what it's making reference to. Okay. Uh, where am I at? Where am I at? That original draft order on religious freedom was leaked to the press back in February and would have established broad exemptions for people and businesses to claim religious objections under virtually any circumstance. So any business like, for example, Walmart, the head of Walmart can say, I'm not hiring you because you appear to me to be a homosexual. I'm not hiring you. So that's what he's making reference to. Again, uh, where am I at? Critics of that original draft, which include ASAE, said the order effectively sanctioned discrimination against the LGBTQ community. The White House shelved the order under protest, and it was reported to be under revision again this week for possible inclusion in the order that Trump signed today. So they want to uh, they want to take that out saying that you would you can't discriminate against sexuality for a job. So, everybody understand anybody confused? So according to the 501c3, it had nothing to do with saying Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. It had nothing to say you couldn't speak against homosexuals. It was about the hiring of homosexuals and it's about the uh uh, funding of political campaigns. So uh, to the black Hebrew, Hebrew Israelite community, please check your facts. Get it together, please.
Shalom, this I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.